If you're a fan of lore in My Hero Academia, Chapter 304 is probably one of your favorite chapters in a very long time. We get to learn so much more about One for All, potential future holders, what some of the holders want out of Deku, and so much more, and what this vestige state really is, which is super interesting, something a lot of people have been wondering about for a very long time. I have a ton of notes here, more than I've taken from the last couple of videos, to talk about every little moment that happened here. My name is Andrew Nimbergen, and today I'm going to be talking about Chapter 304 of My Hero Academia, and diving deep and giving my thoughts afterwards on that. But let's not waste any time and jump right into it with seeing All Might looking over Deku, stating that he can feel the one for all with inside of him, continuing the trend that he kind of knows or has an idea that Deku is having a conversation with the previous holders with inside him. Deku starts to wake up in the vested state, wondering how everyone is doing before looking in front of him and seeing the previous seven All for One users minus All Might and then also the original All for One creator. Over the past few months, we learned that All for One has been growing stronger, which has caused the profiles of previous holders to be copied and now able to communicate not only with Deku, but with each other. And with the recent fight of the Shigaraki, it is now becoming even easier for the previous holders to communicate with Deku. We do get a little moment there about saying, don't worry, you're, everything is still private. We're not prying into your life. We're just able to communicate to you more like this. Um, Deku is still not able to completely talk in this vetch state, but is now starting to put together some noises and almost cause words that the holders seem to be understanding. However, the fourth user comes forth, um, Shinomori Hagage, and says that he is going to be doing the talking. Shinomori mentions how during the previous fight, his quirk danger sense was come out and usable to Deku. There's a cute little moment here about he was aware of the awareness of awareness of Deku or something kind of like that. Just a little moment there, kind of a play on words with the danger sense quirk. But then he goes on to continue to ask Deku if he knows about his death and the age at which he died at. Deku did not, as that it was not covered in All Might's book, probably because All Might didn't have a clear understanding either. But we learned that he died at 40 years old, and it was due to old age. It shifts back that we see that the previous holders have been communicating and observing Yagi, and that they believe that All for One can no longer be held by a regular person. We'll touch on what that means in a couple of minutes here, but then continues on going back and learning more about Shinomori's past, and that how he was kind of a hermit, never really wanting to face one for all, because he felt that I won all for one, as he felt at that point that his quirk wasn't strong enough. So he spent the 18 years he had with the quirk, which is the second longest only behind All Might, training the power until the last year, it completely broke his body and ended up having to pass it on before he died. With all of this happening and their observations, they seem to believe that one for all slowly burns away at the life force of its holders, which is why Shinomori died so early. Deku then goes on to ask how All Might is able to handle it, well, handle it so well, which they kind of say, like, calm down, that's what we're trying to communicate to you. Because what they said after observing Yagi and seeing that he spent, like, longer than anyone else with it, that the one big difference between Yagi and Shinomori was that All Might was born quirkless, just like Deku. And they explain that this is how, they explain how it all works with metaphorical cups. So pretty much if you already have a quirk, your cup is half full or a certain amount full, and when you put all for one into it, it either causes it to crack, overflow, spill, anything you want to think about it with that. But when someone is quirkless and then you put one for all in the body, the body almost folds and molds to fit all for one as its true quirk instead of a quirk piled on top of your existing one, which means that it's a much better fit and that you can hold on to it longer, which is why all for one, I mean, all might is still alive and was able to have it longer than anyone else. So with that being said, though, there are less and less people each generation being born quirkless and Deku was already in the minority and as generations go on and people continue to have kids, it's going to be even less, which means potential applicants for future one for all users are going to be less and less. And then we do go on to see with them making a big bold statement of the previous one for all users saying that you could very well be the last holder of one for all. With that kind of moment staying there and Deku taking a second to realize that, Nana Shimura, the seventh holder of One for All, All Might's mentor, goes and looks at Deku and asks if she can if he can do something for her to kill Shigaraki Tamura, really putting the nail in the coffin that they truly have no love for his her grandson anymore. Or nephew, I apologize. So all of that happening there is just a lore dump beyond lore dumps, learning about several previous holders, why they can communicate with them, why All Might was able to handle the quirk so well and almost be this superhuman-like figure, 
and what is going to happen to one for all in the future. Because there's been so many theories. So first off, this cancels out a couple of theories. One, it confirms Yagi, All Might, has no quirk born. It confirms that Deku had no quirk, despite how many people wanted to and how many fan theories are. It confirms that Nana Shimura no longer has any care about Shiraki. It confirms and kind of denies a lot of fan theories out there, which is, I think, part of why this chapter existed, to put that out there. But it almost more or less cancels out any chance of there being a Boruto-like series for My Hero Academia, of there being a next-generation holder, because I don't think Deku will be one to uncautiously just hand it off to someone that already has a quirk. The chance of no one else, I mean, finding someone that's suitable without a quirk is very unlikely. At least that just wouldn't make sense because, oh, he just goes off across the world and hand it off to someone random. Isn't as interesting as a kid, like such as Naruto and Boruto, having in falling after that journey. So it almost cancels off a next generation like type of My Hero Academia, which is really interesting and something that as the series has gotten closer to ending, I have expected there might be some kind of spinoff because this world is so loved by so many and there's so many stories you can tell in it outside of the one for all versus all for one conversation and whole battle series. So seeing that that's pretty much out of the way, we could still possibly get a time jump as the series is starting to wrap up and Deku is going to be the last holder of one for all more than likely. It is starting to set up more of the finale of the series. It feels like we have the final few confrontations we now have Endeavor and the Todoroki family going against Dobby and finaling up that. We now have Nana Shimura asking Deku to go and kill her relative. And that's going to be obviously the final fight of one for all versus all for one. And then also having that Deku is not going to be able to pass on this quirk. So whatever happens here is going to be finite. So if he wins or loses, that is how the series is going to end. And it's not probably going to pass it on to someone else in the moment, such as we saw during the second movie but it's really interesting seeing all of this happening and trying to think of what this means going forward for the series because i gave those couple of theories there but i don't think we're done in the vestige state i think we're probably going to have one more true chapter in the vestige state possibly understanding more of how to call these quirks or having some conversation around that because obviously deku is going to have some kind of response back to shimura maybe asking questions maybe wondering why because he does know i believe he knows about the relative I actually didn't look this up before the video so i apologize for that but i know all my notes for that so when that conversation comes up once he wakes up that would be a reveal for him as well but going on with that i think we have at least one more vetch state i mean if we had six chapters of keeping up with the Todorokis, i feel like we're probably gonna get one more real big conversation within the vetch state and then deku probably waking up at the end of the next chapter which is going to be questioning from hawks and i think the real conversation about one for all being revealed to the public. I think that's pretty much going to happen guaranteed here. I don't know if it's going to be put out in a press conference, kind of like what Endeavor needs to do, but I think the pro heroes that are going to be fighting alongside Deku are going to understand the fight and struggle between one for all and one and all for one, which is going to be super interesting and building out the theory that people have started already kind of figuring out that there is some connection between All Might and Deku. If you haven't at this point, are you even really paying attention? But I think we have a couple of more setup chapters. I think this is pretty much is going to be called the recovery arc in my eyes, that it is going to be the recovery and setup arc for this final battle, maybe with some pro heroes from overseas finally showing up, and then the one final battle. I don't envision having much more than a few arcs. I know traditionally there are some lighthearted arcs thrown in here and there, like, oh, we had the Super Series arc, and now we're having kind of a recovery arc, and there could be lighthearted arc. It's kind of what the normally one is. You've seen that with the school festival with the uh, quirk licenses even in season four when Todoroki and uh Bakugo were getting their hero licenses that was a very lighthearted moment kind of going into the rest of the season I don't think that's going to happen here and I think it's going to continue to stay deep down and dark until we do have the final battle because I can't envision a tonal shift making sense here I can't envision all for one just leaving things be I know Shigaraki is resting and building up his body but the villains definitely have the advantage here so them Giving the heroes any chance to breathe just doesn't make sense in this situation. But who knows what could happen at this point after Endeavor comes out and speak. Maybe they regain some of the public's trust and things kind of calm down before a short time jump, a couple month time jump. Again, similar to what happened with the hospital raid causes um, everything to kind of go back to normal and maybe a little bit of normalcy before jumping in the final battle. I have no idea what's going to happen here, but 
I think a couple things are certain in these next couple chapters. Endeavor is going to speak to the public. Pro heroes are going to learn about all for one and one for all. Deku is either going to unlock additional quirks or learn what is required of his body or of his mental state to cause these quirks to come forward or at least understand what they are. So when they come, I guess he's done training before in advance, understanding and researching them, but maybe getting a better understanding of how to call these quirks and get his power up because we know Shigaraki is going to get a power up as well in the next battle. So this seems to be the moment of when Deku is going to receive his. That's my rambling. I know that was a lot. Thank you for tuning in for the video. I kind of went over everything in the chapter. It was a lot focused on all for one. And I kind of expanded out to what it means for the series as a whole as it was very straightforward. There wasn't much debating here of what is going to happen. It was very finite of like, this is what's going to happen. You're probably going to be the last user. You have to give it to someone quirkless. Like there's not much debate here of like, oh, what's going to happen? Like they kind of laid it out very well. So I wanted to talk about what the future is holding for my heroes of the series and what to maybe expect in chapter three or five. Who knows? They just go jumping all over the place. And each chapter, while it makes sense in the series, is kind of unpredictable unless it's a continuing arc like the Todoroki arc. I don't have much else to say besides if you do enjoy my hero content, if you enjoy this video, make sure to check out the other manga videos. Make sure to subscribe, like, leave your comments down below. I do do this each and every Sunday. We also do Vigilantes each and every Friday with the newest chapter. Always making sure to cover that whenever it comes out on a bi-weekly basis, not a weekly basis. And we do do a weekly My Hero podcast called Class 1A, which you can find on YouTube or all podcasting platforms across the world. Thank you all so much for listening and watching. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this chapter and the series as a whole. But until then, I will see you guys next.